Africa is a diverse continent with multiple cultures and differing climate patterns. The northern section of Africa is dominated by the Sahara Desert, although coastal sections along the Mediterranean Sea do obtain rainfall for certain crops. Below the Sahara is the Sahel region, semi-arid with sporadic rainfall. The people that live here are primarily raising sheep or camels. The Equator runs through Central Africa. This area has many tropical rainforests, the southern area of Africa generally has a warm climate like the southern part of the United States, which has differing monsoon seasons. The people use irrigation to grow crops. Additionally, much of northern Africa is Muslim, with the exception of Ethiopia in eastern Africa, which is Christian. And from the rainforest to the south, the majority are either Christian or animist, a tribal pagan religion. The Great Lakes is a temperate highland region in and around the Great Rift Valley in East Central Africa. The main economy is based on agriculture and cattle pastoralism. It also has a substantial iron industry and a dense population due to solid agricultural output. There were many diverse political systems in Africa. Some Africans lived in hunter-gatherer societies, as mentioned before, with the pastoral nomads in the Sahel, and others were subject of powerful monarchs. These are the many kingdoms of Africa. While these societies dealt without direct contact beyond the continent, other African societies had formative contacts with external political systems, commercial markets, and religious traditions. For example, Ethiopia, Congo, and South Africa all had connections to the wider Christian world. The Ethiopian church was the oldest already over a thousand years old when the Portuguese attempted a military alliance in the 1500s. In the Congo Kingdom, civil war and invasion by outside forces led to disintegration and the abandonment of the Congo capital of San Salvador in the 17th century. Into this political vacuum stepped Kimpa Vita, who declared that she had been visited by St. Anthony. It was said that she died each Friday only to arise each Sunday after having conversed with God, who told her that the people of Congo must unite under a new king. She taught that Christ and the apostles were black men who had lived and died in Congo. Portuguese missionaries regarded her beliefs as heresy. Nevertheless, her doctrine was popular and her followers repopulated the old capital city. She was captured by rivals, tried for witchcraft and heresy, and burned at the stake but the Congo tradition of depicting Jesus as an African endured. The ascetic Calvinist version of Christianity was brought to South Africa by Dutch and French Huguenot immigrants in the late 17th century. Calvinism was worlds apart from the mystical Ethiopian faith or religious syncretism in Congo. In the very southeastern tip of Africa, where Cape Town was founded in 1652, the indigenous Khoisan speaking peoples were few in number. They had no metal weapons and most fatally no resistance to diseases such as smallpox. Within a hundred years white settlers had enslaved them or driven them beyond the expanding colonial frontier. The Songhe Empire had its capital at Goa along the Niger River. Arose from a thousand year old tradition of large scale states in this region. In addition to leading armies of conquest, the Askias or emperors of Sangagia were patrons of Islamic arts and sciences. The Sankare Mosque in Timbuktu, with its impressive library, became a center of intellectual debate. Timbuktu was famous for its gold trade as well as its book market, where Finally bound editions were eagerly sought by Muslim scholars, both Arab and African. When rulers, traders, and intellectuals from Songhai went on the Hajj or pilgrimage to Arabia, they amplified the empire's connections with the outside world. The city of Jenny in ancient West Africa trade site on upper Niger River. Jenny's merchants benefited from the Trans-Saharan trade and in the 13th century, when the original mosque on this site was built, the city's people embraced the Islamic faith. The mosque, a world heritage site, is the largest mud brick structure in the world and shows how Islamic architecture 
was influenced by the use of local materials and by West African aesthetic principles. The current structure is over 100 years old. This is now part of the UN historical preserve sites in the world. 